Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today's video is about learning to let go, having fun, experimenting and realizing that it's okay if things go south in your crafty table. You have two choices at the end and both are fine. Bin it or fix it. If you bin it, nobody can take you away the fun that you had and all that you learned while experimenting. And next time you can try a different route, so don't be afraid to create. If on the other hand you fix it, well, you may suddenly fall in love with something that you hated minutes ago. And that's what happened to me. In any case, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. So even if you don't like what you create, someone may actually think it's a stunning piece. Or you yourself, tomorrow, with fresh eyes, may see the hidden beauty on it. This card made the cut, my cut, at the very last minute. I thought of binning it so many times that I lost count. But at the end, I think magic happened. So I wanted to share with you all the process and all the layers behind. Let me know what you think. You may actually don't like it because this card is really grungy, but I totally fell in love with all the bits and pieces and all those tiny details. For today's card, I'll just use one stencil, PS223, from my January 2021 release. Here are all the stencils from that release and the stamps. Okay, now let me show you all the layers behind this card. I decided to start my card by doing a technique that I've never done, which is finger painting. Basically, you put some paint and then you spread your paint with the finger and you mix it and blending with other paints. But of course, this is my first time <laughs> and I was using um, some opaque paints and they were, well, not melting, not uh, blending very well. But well, I, I did my best, which was not perfect, but well, there you go. So this is the first step, the first layer that I applied, two different colors of green. These are gorgeous colors of green. It's front door and then the other one is called Frosty and they are both by Paparazzi. I will be using the Paparazzi fresco paints for this first layer. And now I decide that I want to put some dots, so I use the stencil to create some rounds. So in the light side I put the dark color and then I'll do the same thing on the other side adding um, light on top of dark and these are opaque so one paint will cover the other layer so you can build up one layer after the next and you will not see through if you wanted to see through you will need to, to add a little bit of satin glaze or something that actually waters this down and then you will see it but well here because paint is a bit wet still I kind of get a blend so it's not perfect then I get some mistakes like that one there that I'm covering with the finger and then I decide to smudge everything and to be honest I don't like this layer at all <laughs> but it's a foundation layer okay and then yeah at this point I already thought that I could bend this card <laughs> straight away and actually I wanted to um, call the video something like don't try this at home or um, yeah like hot mess inside but I thought okay uh, let's not discourage people because actually I mean it's fun experimenting and it's okay to do that and if we don't try we will don't learn so it's better that well what do we experiment we had fun and why not yeah something may come up nice of this even after many layers as you will see here I mean this will be one mistake after the next but um, now I'm using peppermint another um, green color very very light and I'm just adding those dots and then you will see that after this layer, it has improved a little bit more. I mean, it's not sharp that edge. But then I incorporate two other layers. And then here it starts a bit, well, horrible, the situation. Um, so now I'm using, I think, peachy keen and peach nectar. This one is peach nectar. And then I'll use a lighter tone of a coral that it would be called as um, peachy keen. So that's the one. And then I'm basically doing up and down layers and um, um, lines to create some sort of pattern. So it's not random, it's up and down and left and right. Okay, just to, well, break it down. And now I decide that, yeah, I don't like this that much. So I'll go back to a technique that I kind of liked, a little bit different. So this is the mono printing technique with a base of crunch paste. Then instead of just applying crunch paste rough, I'm adding it through the stencil so then I'll have a pattern plus the texture paste being stick to my paper. So basically I'm creating a palette, okay? And the palette is paper with grunge paste on top. And then I'm adding some of that paint and I'm mono printing that into my paper. So I'm, I'm putting those dots there 
and because my grunge paste is wet it is transferring onto my paper so it's adding a lot of texture okay and I really like this combination on other cards that I made I linked the video uh, so then you can see some of them that I made um, at Frankfurt I think it was I did a demo so I'll put that one and I'm pressing that down and yeah so I, now I'm adding a different color I mean so far it's not that bad the card but then you will see that well, now it becomes a bit darker and yeah I keep on adding stuff but and in every step of the way that I'm doing I don't love this at all <laughs> so it's like oh maybe the color combination that I chose is not right and I don't know I'm going to lighten this up so now I'm adding a little lighter color and again these are opaque so one layer covers the next and of course if you are lighting the touch I mean this is this is nice I like it it's not my favorite it's not my uh, typical colors that I would choose but I was trying so and I'm adding the dots over there so I'm kind of not finished and I'm adding a few more so I'll add it in three places normally three is like a magic number <laughs> uh, so uh, three spots it's a normal uh, a nice way to to kind of uh, put things around into a project so I'm just trying it a little bit and then now I'm experimenting again so I'm just trying to do like um, press the, the back of the stencil on top of my card so I'm loading it with paint and then I'll put some water so it's watered and then I'm pressing down and the idea is that oh you will get the having fun edge kind of right but well you will see nothing is seen okay so I will do a close-up do you see anything I don't <laughs> okay so I didn't like it so I put it back where it was and then I put some grunge paste and then at that point I could have finished there and it's not bad right but I did want to add some more interest, so I thought, okay, let's spread, uh, I mean, well, a splatter some sort of paint to add more interest. And I really didn't like this color combination. So then, well, um, I decided to bring in a little bit of different products. So uh, my embossing powders, to adding a touch of gold and as well a little bit of touch of that, um, uh, what is it, that uh, blue. This is the Ancient Jewels Trio that I designed for WoW as well in, in January. And this one is called Egyptian Turquoise. So basically it's a mix of um, of gold and a blue. And basically if you need a, a white surface for the um, blue to show because it's basically translucent, otherwise you wouldn't see it, right? So I'm using the orange paste as a base and yeah, you can see the, the colors there. But I didn't love this again. And well, you will see me that I will keep on on changing and doing more stuff. So now I decide that yeah, I want some more splashes there of paint. But I thought, okay, let's change completely the the color palette. So I'm adding infusions, <laughs> golden sands, and then whoosh, this completely shifts the card. And now I like it. I like it much more. Uh, the only thing is that. I love it as it is wet because it's very vibrant and the letters are, are very, very um, standing out. So if I had stopped here, it would have been perfect. Not perfect, but I mean, it would have been enough, okay? But um, well, now I start adding more and more stuff and well, th yeah, there are a lot of layers you will see and I think I kind of ruined it a bit more. So now, well, um, you see the embossing powder fell into the table so I decided that I'm going to pinch it and put it in the in the wet parts because well uh, you don't need um, only embossing ink um, if their surface is wet it it can make the powder too stick enough as to well you have time to heat set it and then it will stick to the paper so that's what I was doing there and it looked very nice while I melted because basically you can see the the blue and then it adds a different touch but of course this blue is translucent and then you will not see it that much so then it changes again the appearance and, and whatever I wanted to achieve so I don't fully love it so then I start adding more stuff more drops here and there of mixed infusions I try it and then I decide okay instead of that I'm going to add the original paint that I put because maybe that paint is more vibrant and then well I have another idea okay let's put chalk paint which is white so then I can add white dots 
with the idea that I can emboss those dots again and get a little bit more of that um, blue from the powder. That was the idea. So that's why I was doing that. I bring back the powders again more. So this started to be very, very grungy. But this is not all. <laughs> we are not done here. I mean, oh my gosh, this is so long, this video. And I mean, I added so many things and so many layers. Now I decide to add some ink. And to be honest, if I had stopped here again and I didn't cover the title, it would have been good. So until here, it's fine. But then I made the mistake and I'm starting to cover the, the actual having and I was like, I'm thinking, what do I do? Okay, cover it all. <laughs> and then that's a, the biggest mistake I think here so far, because now I'm covering everything there and the title is hidden and I don't see it standing out as much and then I don't like it. So then I grab that piece of... Um, this is like a sanding block so I'm trying to retrieve the white from the grunge paste and I kind of manage a little bit but I don't like that finish so then I add more water to make the ink react and I dry it and I try to dive it but of course it doesn't work then I add more water and well you will see me trying to fix this in many different ways and trying to add a little bit more contrast on that having fun against the background but every time it dries, it kind of um, gets still hidden. So I don't fully love it. And I'm still thinking, what do I do with it? Do I pin it? What do I do with it? I try it with a frame that's going to be there. And I think like, it's not standing out properly. I need to do something about it. So then, well, I try to um, lighting up the background. So I'm just adding some white there. And that's another big mistake I think that I do. <laughs> Basically, I'm applying the um, remaining of that uh, paint everywhere and then I'm causing well, those splashes that I don't like at all. I mean, I regret from the <laughs> moment one that I do it, but I was experimenting and anyway. So I'm starting to put it there and then I decide that no, no, no. I prefer to just put uh, infusions and retrieve again that yellow. I'm not getting anywhere here. What do I do? I'll add more infusions. <laughs> so now my idea is adding more infusions to make it more dark. So you'll see me putting things on there. And sometimes working in opposite corners works. So that's what I will be trying as well. So I'll be attempting to add things on the other um, corner as well. So the, that's the other side, which I'm trying to make it dark as well. And then because I have a lot of infusions in the my craft sheet, then I'm pulling these out to try to make the edges also sharp, but then I make another mistake. Have you seen that corner? Now it's white. Oh my gosh, it touched the white paint. What do I do with white? Okay, I'll emboss it. <laughs> so I add more embossing powder. I forget about my base, so I'm just applying it directly. Oh my gosh, I'm brave. And then I'm just melting it. And yeah, I have a corner there that is pretty gold. But this is not the final layer. So I'm adding a bit more of infusions and then directly with the brush, I'm just trying to cover everything, everything back because I don't like that kind of uh, white that I got from the paint. So this is like, oh my gosh, a complete mess. And I'm thinking to myself, what do I do with it? Really? I don't know what to do. So hot mess. Yeah, I think I earned the hot mess badge. And now it's time to think what is wrong with the card and what it's okay. So I think it has jammy texture and many details under all the layers, but the sentiment can't be read. There are too much details lost, so it seems too uniform and nothing stands out and that was needs fixing. So let's fix it. So I clean up my craft room a little bit and then I thought about it and then I decided that yes, I want to retrieve that white. And I'm using a pencil and it doesn't have any anything on it, so it's just scratching the surface. And that has retrieved some white. And then the next step is basically adding some shadows and I'm adding them with that pen. And I'm adding just lines on the left and the bottom part of each of those bumped parts. So every letter I'm just coloring the left and the bottom. So that's like the shadow. And then I'll add some sort of light on the opposite sides using a white pen. That's a technique that I learned from Seth Apter that he was doing. And I thought it was brilliant because basically it makes things pop out a lot. I mean, can, can you see that having? It's already coming up at you, right? So it really, really stands out. And now I think I, I start 
loving this finally but well after the white pen you will see that it pops out a bit more so I'm applying it on the having fun but I will also apply it on the different dots and you will see them in a second how they pop So this is how it is like that, but then can you see the dots there? So they are like bubbles now and that adds much more interest, I think. So now with the white paint, I'm adding those touches of white. I'm painting the top of the letters a little bit and I'm adding also that shine. So on the top and right corner of everything. And then for the bubbles or the dots, I'm adding like a big uh, highlight on top left and a small highlight down bottom. And this really reminds you like a water drop or something or a bubble. And that's the final touch really. So I think that finally this final touch added magic. And as Seth Apter said, you're always one layer away from magic after on a project. So I think this was the case. The other part to that quote is that you're also one layer away from disaster. <laughs> and I repeated one disaster after the next, but well. Can you see the comparison between the two? I mean, it has nothing to do. And some closer pictures because of course you can see all the details now that we have. And now you know how many layers are behind this and all the effort and all the doubts and everything that I went through during this process that basically it didn't start as planned. I think art has its own will, so I can only have an idea, but then it turns out and it completely changes so I think you need to embrace imperfection and then just try not to think about it too much and just let it go and let it flow and just have a rough idea and then basically create whatever it comes and don't think about it too much so that was all for today I hope you enjoyed if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel and I would love to read your comments thanks very much for watching bye